What's up everyone, my name is Kenneth. Son and I are doing figures on live insects in Singapore, which is why I thought of this great idea to bring my special friend from all the way from New York to come and say, uh, please enjoy. Hi everyone, hi, hi, hi. So I am Sean from Little Red Jungle. Thanks for dropping by this interview. Uh, I'm sure you're here because all of you are really interested and curious about leaf insects. So we've got a real big treat for you here today because we have Royce coming. Hi, say hi Royce. Hello, good morning, afternoon, wherever you are. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, so Royce is actually an entomologist uh, and he is a basically a scientist who studies insects and he is from the United States of America. So big time difference <laughs> from you know the two of us. Uh, um, yeah, and he's currently working at the American Museum of Natural History, New York, right? So Kenneth, you and Royce actually know each other, you know, prior to this, this interview. So maybe you want to share with us how you guys have met. Yeah, so thank you, Sean. So actually how... Boys and I met it because of uh, our mutual friend Jester and I, I did a uh, commission for Royce and I illustrated a uh, extinct lake insect called the Eophyllum, which is based on the fossil. Yeah. So, Royce, is that how you remember meeting Kenneth as well? Yeah, I've actually, I think I've followed Kenneth on Instagram and Facebook long before we actually started talking because of his amazing nature uh, illustrations. Yeah. And um, then Jessa actually reached out to me and said, hey, I know you're looking for an illustrator to do a project. Uh, Kenneth would be great. And I was like, of course, I, you know, I've seen Kenneth's work before. Yeah, it's pretty cool that uh, you, yeah, you two have, have worked together before and, and, and you know, somehow this landed us this interview. <laughs> right, so Royce, are you ready to teach us all about leaf insects right now? Sure, happy to. They they are definitely my passion, so I'd love to share any questions. Awesome. Right. Yeah, so okay, Can thank I... you, Son, for the introduction. So I will just begin with this. So as we may all may not know, there are actually 10 genera for leaf insects. So what is your identification key for each of them? So because there are so many different uh, genera right now, uh, there's number of different features for identifying the different groups. Um, so actually, we're right now working on doing um, a very nice illustrated key to all the different genera. Um, so probably be easier to uh, share that illustrated key with you guys once it's once it's available. But for some genera, you're looking at the, the nodes on the back of the head. Sometimes it's a single node. Sometimes it's two nodes. Uh, you're looking at the form of the lobes on the leaf, on the legs, as well as sometimes looking at the wing venation of uh, how the different veins either bend or split uh, within the wings. So bit by bit, we're kind of clarifying things. Nice. Oh. So, yeah, we, which is pretty cool because in Singapore, we kind of only have three species. <laughs> leaf insects so um, it, it's it's pretty cool to to see you describing you know how you guys even differentiate between the the, the genera of, of all of it but okay so you've mentioned that there are a lot of them so you know just a ball in the park right how many species are there in the world exactly <laughs> is there a rough number so if if you had asked me that question 20 years ago I would have said, oh, maybe 30, 40 species. Um, but now, uh, the more we've been looking at them and focusing in, we realized they're actually quite a diverse group. And I think as of right now, there's something like 106 species. Ooh. And from my work working in museums and always looking on iNaturalist and Facebook groups and just talking with people all around the world, I think I know of at least 150 uh, species, so many that still need names. And then looking at maps of where we see big areas of diversity um, and where we have big gaps in our knowledge, there's probably closer to 200 species out there. So there's a whole bunch that we don't know yet. Yeah, so, yeah. which is pretty um, interesting because I think the, the latest um, spe species that we have in Singapore was discovered in 2017. Um, and like I said, you know, there, there's still so mm -hmm. much we are still learning about leaf insects, right? So do you expect there to be a lot more species to be discovered? Like even now, I mean, you already said 200 plus, right? So do you expect even more? Oh, yes. Yeah, the, 
the amazing thing we're finding with the leaf insects is before people thought that they were you know just a couple of species that had very large ranges all across southeast asia however now we're finding that many of these species are very kind of pockets so in vietnam for example uh, every mountaintop you go to has a completely different species um, and then going from islands to islands more often than not these different islands have different species as well that have very different egg morphologies or very different genetic histories. So that is one of the issues of the past is that um, we were only looking at a couple specimens or only looking at adults. Um, but now that we've added in DNA studies, as well as looking at eggs and freshly hatched nymphs, uh, the clarity is starting to come together. There's so many more species and quite a diversity. Nice. Wow, that's so amazing. Wow. So uh, because for us, we have not been to the museum archives, so we actually do not have the idea of what are the missing pieces. So I would like to ask you this, are there any extinct modern day leaf insect, you know, like uh, in the recent maybe past year, do you find that the species are disappearing? So that's a really hard question to answer because of how hard they are to find. Um, so there are definitely high areas where we know that they, there's lots of deforestation and we know that that is a really big threat to the leaf insects. Um, as far as a nice example, um, the first thing that comes to mind is Obi Island in the Nisha. Um, it's a very small island off the, uh, the coast of the Halmahara. And um, we were just recently sent a photo of a leaf insect from uh, home, uh, from Obi Island, but unfortunately, Obi Island is is highly uh, deforested and it's getting worse year after year. So this may be one of those few cases where the species doesn't get named until after it's completely been wiped out. But there are um, there are a little silver lining with this. Uh, thankfully, the leaf insects are not super picky eaters, so they do also like guava and mango and. Uh, things that people have cultivated just in their backyards. So even if their preferred habitat gets destroyed, some of these species may still be able to survive. But uh, there is one of those weird cases where we might not have seen a specimen for over 100 years, um, think that it's extinct, and then we find another one. So uh, they're just so hard to find. So it's, it's unfortunately difficult to answer that question. But looking at habitat destruction is probably the easiest way to determine uh, how how well they're doing in the wild. I I I just rather hope that uh it's they're hard to find and they are not completely you know extinct. <laughs> That's what I I, I rather, yeah. rather hope. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 Well. Okay. Um. So we are gonna be moving on to the next segment of the interview where we will be asking more personal questions from you. And so that is uh, the question that are formed by myself and also the followers on Instagram. So, okay, so let's begin. Our first question is, what are you currently studying on about leaf insects? So right now I'm working on my PhD, uh, studying the leaf insects. And there's a couple of different projects that I'm working on. One is trying to unravel their evolutionary history to understand from looking at all of the species we have alive today to understand uh, how we ended up with such a diversity, where these different insects uh, were originating from and kind of clarifying uh, this group of really fascinating insects. Another thing that I'm working on is uh, looking at the pigments in their exoskeleton and looking at how they are able to color themselves. Because obviously anyone who's seen a leaf insect uh, knows that they have amazing coloration and uh, beautiful, beautiful camouflage. Mm -hmm. oh, that's true. Yeah, that's you, the topic that you cover in the, the online interview that you had on YouTube. Yeah. So, I mean, okay, so you have, you're doing, you know, you're studying this right now for your PhD um, and you're talking about you know, unraveling their, their, their history. So what is the strangest thing that you have learned about Fasmids. So, okay, just for the for the viewers who don't know what fasmids are, they are basically your stick insects and your leaf insects, right? So, what's the strangest thing that you have learned throughout this whole process of of you know studying them? 
So I think one of my favorite things with the phasmids is actually their coloration. So it's a topic that many people have uh, only kind of started to look at. So there's still a great deal that we don't know. But the amazing thing with the phasmids is we finally are starting to understand examples of uh, color change. So some species are able to adjust their coloration throughout their lifetime, uh, as well as day to day. Um, there's a couple examples of insects that will actually change color at night, uh, and they will do that every single night, um, just to make sure that their camouflage is absolutely perfect. But they can, besides changing color uh, just by rapidly, they can also change color through time based on what they're seeing. So there was an amazing study where they actually painted the bottom half of the phasmid's eye black so that the phasmid thought that it was standing on a dark surface. And the phasmid actually started to create more omochrome pigments. So it started to change its color based on what it was seeing. So there's, there's some really amazing uh, little topics that have only just started to be uh, searched at for within the leaf and stick insects. Probably there's a lot more uh, ability to change colors and many other pigments that we haven't even discovered yet. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I, I didn't even know that they could first change colors that rapidly. Uh, and secondly, that, that experiment with the black paint is pretty cool. <laughs> That that's that's uh very interesting to 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 learn about. But actually, I'm quite curious. How do you even get started on studying about leaf insects? Because as you said, they are so obscure. Um, and I mean, even before you telling me about all this cool stuff, I I would have known these facts myself. So how did you get started with it all in the first place? So I've always been uh, passionate about entomology and. Over the years, I've kind of jumped across all kinds of different groups. Uh, I've worked with butterflies and beetles and uh, phasmids and all kinds of fun things. But what really drew me to the leaf insects was that um, there was so much that was still not clear and so many big mysteries that needed to be solved. So uh, even though I love all insects, um, the phasmids and the leaf insects really needed the most work. And so that's why I've been uh, focusing my work on them over the years. But it was a number of years ago when I first saw my first live leaf insect. Um, it was a friend at a, at a local zoo who was bringing some live insects around to share at educational opportunities uh, at a museum. And I got to uh, see a live Pulchrophyllum giganteum uh, for the first time. And it was just phenomenal camouflage and it, it blew me away. So as I started looking through and identifying more species, I realized that um, every museum I went to, there was usually something I found in the museum collection that I couldn't identify, uh, that no one had seen before and had been sitting there for 30, 40, you know, 100 plus years, um, never, never, never looked at in detail. Wow, That's yeah. Cool. yeah. It's a very amazing journey that you had. You said about your first wild leaf insect. Where else have you seen them as well? So unfortunately, because of COVID pandemic, uh, I was supposed to spend a lot of time actually in the field the last couple of years um, to actually be studying them in the wild, um, but unfortunately did not get a chance. I've, so far, I've only been to the Philippines uh, a number of years ago and uh, was able to see some live leaf insects on Marinduque Island, uh, which was amazing to see. But hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, this, uh, this summer we actually have a number of field work opportunities lined up. Um, we're going to be going to one of the big hot spots of diversity, uh, that's Papua New Guinea. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a number of different leaf insect genera there, as well as many, many species and many, many species that are, have not been named yet uh, from Papua New Guinea. So hopefully this summer, get to go out to Papua New Guinea and then we're also going to spend a couple of weeks in the Philippines. Um, we have a number of collaborators and colleagues in the, both of those countries who we're going to go out and uh, do field work with. Crossing fingers for you too. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, can I ask you about uh, the wild, the wild leaf insects, right? And I think you also mentioned about the museums. So, my next question is is kind of, 
asking you about the balance between the two, right? So what I'm, I'm really curious is your thoughts on the pet trade influencing, for example, like the conservation of leaf insects or even the study of leaf insects. Because, you know, people do till this day still poach leaf insects, just taking them off the trees in the forest and keeping them as pets, right? But yet at the same time, these are the people, the collectors, who actually contribute to the knowledge of these animals also, I, I feel. So what, what do you think? Um, you know, what's, what's the balance between the two? So there is definitely a better way and a worse way to go about uh, working with na natural insects. Um, my, I do have the nice thought in my head that because leaf insects are so difficult to find, uh, most of the time, people walk by a tree and never know they're there. So although, you know, every now and then uh, live ones do get brought in from the wild, uh, it's, it's very rare. And I doubt that the pet trade has any impact on it, especially because many of the um, examples you see in the pet trade, uh, you may have, you know, massive, uh, massive colonies that people, you know, share as pets and across Europe and, you know, have hundreds of thousands of specimens. But in reality, most likely it was a single female that was found in the wild. Uh, she laid a couple hundred eggs, and then that just kind of balloons out from there. Um, mm. It might have been only a single specimen that uh, came from the wild and started this massive colony. So as far as making much of an impact on the natural habit there, the natural populations, I, I really doubt it. Um, even people who are actively hunting for these insects, you know, have all the correct permits and who are doing it properly, um, more often than not, we don't find any. Uh, it's, uh, it's very, very difficult to find. And thankfully, that, that does help, uh, help protect them in the wild from poaching. Okay, that, that's really good to hear. <laughs> because, I mean, you, you, you would often see pictures of people keeping leaf insects, you know, as pets. And uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, the, the common viewer would, you know, question how, you know, they have attained such an insect, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Everything, everything that you're seeing on, you know, Facebook and on, you know, in a pet store or anything like that, my guess is, you know, a very, very, very high percentage of that uh, was somebody else's pet from somebody else's pet from somebody else's pet. Uh, and you could maybe track it down to a, a single time when an a insect was found in the wild. Yeah, now we all know, which is which, which I'm thankful. I'm thankful for. <laughs> yeah. Final question for Royce. So I'm sorry. I'm gonna put you in the spot now. Um, if you can give a elevator speech to someone who does not know about leaf incest, what is the one thing that you would want to share with them so that they will care more about and protect them? Thank you, Jane. Uh, one, of, one of my favorite things that could help uh, influence people with the leaf insects is just how little we know about them. Um, it's one of my favorite quotes is, we only protect what we love and we only love what we know. So it's one of those cases where um, if we have all these species that we have no idea about, um, there's, there's, there's no appreciation for them yet. So the more that people understand about them, uh, the more people will love them and protect them. But it needs to start with uh, people need to be actively uh, understanding and looking for and kind of helping clarify this amazing group of insects. So it's the, uh, the thrill of discovery is, is really what, uh, what I love about the leaf insects. And I hope people really enjoy about them. Yeah. I mean, it's always great to end a video with, uh, you know, a, a nice little coat. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for that, Ed. Um, and yeah, I, like you said, you know, we, we need to learn more about them in order to, for us to love them and then to, you know, to protect them, right? So I hope that everyone watching today, uh, uh, it's pre-recorded, but you know, when you're finally watching it, I hope this interview has helped you uh, learn a little bit more about leaf insects, uh, especially from Royce. And, and I hope that this would help you start your journey in protecting leaf insects. Yeah. I always, always yeah. open to questions anytime about leaf insects or entomology. Um, yeah. You can find me on Facebook or Instagram and uh, email me anytime. <laughs> yeah, we're going to flash his, his, his links here, his, his Facebook and Instagram links over here, somewhere, wherever it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kenneth, do you have anything else to add? Yeah, so I probably will 
leave the rest of the link that you can watch uh, Ardor of Voice sharing about Live in Z so you can know more about uh, just from this interview and more. So we would like, once again, we would like to thank Roy for coming and doing this interview with us. It's just a great pleasure hosting you and uh, learning more about you and uh, your life journey and uh, working with the Live in Sets. Thank you. Even if it's such a short interview, yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much.